So I literally just got done talking about, you know, some devices you probably shouldn't end up purchasing, which is kind of funny, but I will tell you, out of a majority of the different devices that I personally owned, something like the iPhone 10 is one of those devices that's probably going to be sticking around for a bit of time, and to be honest, I kind of think this is still a pretty good phone to pick up for the most part, and it's definitely a device that if you own, you should probably keep. If you're not complaining about it, if you're not really freaking out about it too much, you might be totally okay if you end up keeping this device even until the iPhone 15s come out. Now, one thing I want to tell you, of course, the 14s are better, the 14 Pro is better, and the 15s are going to be phenomenally better as well, especially if they bring USB-C. But the one thing I've kind of been telling everyone about recently is that these older devices are starting to hold up even better year after year. And even though the iPhone 10 didn't really get the most amount of features with an iOS 16, compared to even the iPhone XS, I kind of do think that the iPhone 10 is in a very good spot, and I definitely do think that if you own it, you should keep it. Now, we all know the body and the gesture-based design and the cameras and everything like that, but one thing I've been kind of noticing, especially with the devices like the 14 Pro and iPhone 14, when I go ahead and compare the iPhone 10 to something like the iPhone 14, I am shocked to see how great of a quality just the iPhone 10 is still being so many years later. It's actually pretty insane to me when I look at a device like the iPhone 10, how good this thing is still holding up. In the speed department, especially in the smoothness department, the iPhone 10's display, as well as the smoothness factor between them, still holds up very, very well. Those types of things are the main reasons why I will pick up a phone like an iPhone SE 3 or an iPhone SE 2 or an iPhone 8 and think to myself that this phone is just not as good as something like an iPhone 14 and I would almost recommend people to go from an iPhone SE 3 to an iPhone 14 but I wouldn't really recommend people from an iPhone 10 to go up to an iPhone 14 if they're not really complaining about it. If you're not complaining about the SE 3 either, like it's not a big deal, but I would be more inclined if I had an iPhone SE 3 to go to a 14 rather than an iPhone 10 to a 14. It's so weird how some of that kind of stuff works, but that is why that gesture-based design that the iPhone 10 came with just is so important. It holds up very, very well, and that's why I'm actually looking forward to the next iPhones because USB-C is probably going to be that next major change, to be honest maybe since even the gesture-based design on the iPhone 10. Now on top of that, I will say the battery life has gotten significantly better on iOS 16. It's definitely not better than the iPhone 14s by any stretch of the means, but I still think it's a pretty big improvement from iOS 15 on my iPhone 10, which is very weird. I would not expect that at all to be the case, but now that it is, that kind of puts this device in a very interesting spot. In my personal opinion, if you were somebody who still owns something like an iPhone 10, this is going to be a really decent device to still own, and I do think it sits in a very good spot where, like I said, it's not going to be the first iPhone I would recommend to people, but it is a very decent iPhone, especially if you still own it. So I would personally love to hear your thoughts about this. Let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that means so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.